Hey YouTubers, Chris here. This is a uh, Ford 1220 tractor, four wheel drive, and the front axle took a dump on me. So I need to remove it. So I'll uh, show you how to do that. I've got a lot of other things to do, so I'm not I'm not the best at doing differential repair. And I don't want to learn the hard way. So I've got a local guy that's going to do it for me, but at least I'll get it off the tractor. He also does tires, so I'm going to replace all the tires with the correct size. It's very crucial that you get the right ratio. So I had to get the, um, the manual and everything to figure that out. What I need the tractor for right now is to set all these pavers. My front driveway I've been wanting to do for a long time. But I'll show you how to do pavers also in another video. So on, on this one... I needed the tractor to dig down enough to go get all the bad stuff out, put new stuff in. So I've got half of it done. This other half, I got to do a lot of tractor work before I can start on it. I'm almost done with this side. So I got to have somebody else rebuild it in the meantime. So it'll take about a week. I got to build a retaining wall on the other side. I'll show you how to do that on another video. But either way. So, <clears throat> what we're going to do here is we're going to replace, excuse me, remove tires, steering linkage, drive shaft, all that stuff. The, um, and there's a few other bolts that hold it in. So, here we go. Take the wheel off. Pretty simple operation. The main thing I wanted to show you is, I've got safety glasses on. Wearing gloves, using impact sockets. Okay, don't use the chrome ones. They're going to bust at some point. And you don't want to be there when it happens. wheels off. Next thing we got to do is take these guys off. These are the uh, steering arm. Let's see where we're at. Yeah. So we got to take these guys off and then this one off. This one I don't have the right puller for. I got an older puller. This guy right there. It's the correct style. It's just not going to get up under there. What you don't want to do is damage this boot. So, you don't want to use pickle forks, stuff like that. You may be able to get away with loosening this bolt, cotter pin, and banging it just right there, and it might just pop right out. If not, i got to go to O'Reilly's. Alright, well, I loosened that nut. Tapped it gently on the side with the hammer, didn't work. You don't want to tap it on the top of there because you can do, you know, when it levers around. So, anyway, off to O'Reilly's. I'm, I'm the type of guy that likes to know before I go. Okay, so I got to know how wide this is so that I can get a puller that's small enough to get up under there, get a bite. I'm not good with fractional excuse me with uh, hundreds of inches and thousands of inches but I'm good with fractional so there's this fractional dial caliper I picked up because if you kind of try to run tape across there it's not going to be exact it's kind of you have to look at it and it's like well yeah there that there that there I don't know I like to have it exact so what I can do is put this dude on there that's one and a quarter so it's quarter on there one and then you see two eights right there so two eights make a quarter so i really love this thing so anything that's smaller than one and a quarter on the inside on the inside right there between these two and at least i'd say an eighth of an inch in there so if it's about a one inch it's one 
inches between here and here, then I should be good. All right, got it. 16 bucks with tax. You can also rent it. They'll charge you for it, and then you bring them back. And they'll give you your money back. I just like having tools. All right, so we got the little dude on there. I put some penetrating oil down in here previously. Cause it's a cone-shaped bolt. So uh, anyway, had to tap it with a hammer to just to get it to get in there. So I'm gonna tighten this guy up. Put my gloves back on. <laughs> Okay, sometimes you go in with the pre preconceived notion that you're going to be able to use the right tool for the right job, and, it, and it's going to work. So I bought this little guy. didn't work. It was too uh, it was too big. It slipped off. It was going off to the side. So, last resort, I had to use my pickle. So, we'll see what this boot looks like down in there. But it got it off of there. So now, we'll see how much damage I did to that guy, and I'll just replace it. But Beats going to the dealer that's 100 miles away to go try to get some kind of specialty tool that they're going to have to order and wait. But, still did it safely. Except we're going to take this power steering ram off. I loosened the bottom bolt. There's a 15 16 deep socket that I used. Came right off. So I'm going to go hit that other bottom bolt on the other side over here and then pull it up and out of the way. Yeah, had to hit it with the pickle fork on this side too. Guess I'll just order two new boots. Cheap, cheap, cheap. So I got that power steering cylinder up and out of the way, just zip tied it to a little hole right there on the loader frame. And I got that off. Just gives you more room to, to work. So next up, I'm going to get this bolt right there off that holds that onto the, onto the, uh, that holds that yoke onto the shaft. What I did earlier was I took this boot off. So that boot actually holds in all the fluid. So there was some fluid that came out, but not a lot. So it was up more than halfway. So I don't know. You know, if the failure of this was due to low lubrication, but there, there's a lot of movement in this shaft inside, inside of here. So I'm thinking that this bearing, and it skipped a tooth, because that's where one of these, one of these was locking up. Like you'd go even in two wheel drive, it was locking up. So it. Even when it was out of four wheel drive, it skipped a tooth. And then, so we'll figure it out once it gets out. I got this little bolt out. It's got a little offset in there, keeps that drive shaft in. So it's a 12 millimeter to get it out. We've got a lot of mix of SAE and metric on this tractor. I think it's Shibara. Um, and then there's some that are assembled here in the States. So, there's uh, your 12 millimeter. I like to keep everything on a magnetic tray. Keeps everything from rolling away. Next up, we've got, uh, we've got these bolts. These are three quarter. I'm going to support this before I unbolt those all the way so I can have some control. I'm going to make a mess if I don't drain the oil out of it. So let's do that real quick. Oh my god. That's why it broke. Up under the tractor. In this part, there is a bolt that holds that yoke onto the transmission. That's the drive shaft that goes to the front. So, I'm going to take that out because it looks like if I try to pull it, 
it might bend the drive shaft to this tube or something and that would just uh, be a waste. Alright, so I got it off there, got it hanging loose. I couldn't remove it, couldn't get enough play, but at least that way it's not going to have anything to bend up against. There's plenty to make it, make it move while it's up in there. Yeah. So I'll give it some play so it won't break. Alright, it was really not wanting to let go. So that mount goes right there. Those bolts have been removed, but it's stuck like chuck. And then I was able to get this one loosened with, you know, the persuader. But what it has is these two bosses in there, those two pins. It's kind of giving it a, a fit, a pretty friction fit. Um, so I'm going to do a little vibration uh, on those, and they'll probably hammer right, right off of there. And uh, trying to get a little bit of space in there to wedge something in there. But I'll get it. And so will you. So I've got only a little bit left on this, on this drive shaft. Can't see it. But it should drop out without breaking anything. But what I'd have here is I got it supported by the floor jack in the center. And then these two jack stands on the side. It's not super heavy. It's just about a, about control. So if one side goes out to you know one or the other, you got something to catch it. That's just how I'm doing it. I had to resort to at the front side. Just find a little bite. Keep working it all the way around, and it's coming. Making some progress. That worked out just like I wanted it to because now there's more space here. The jack stand's caught it. Can get that out of the way. It's got that's loose over here, and then now it's not going to bend the drive shaft when when I pull it back. Then it'll be out. Alright, what I decided to do is go ahead and crab walk these jack stands back. So it'll come back evenly. And then I can remove, remove the yoke from the drive shaft. Easier said than done. What I may do. Lower it. So it'll clear this. It was uh, hidden on the mount. So I'll lower the other side. We don't have to. I'll lower it while I'm at it. actual Ford 1120 and 1220 repair manual so just to show you there's a lot of differences on this they talk about uh, removing the drag link one um, from the spindle arm two and those don't exist they're not here this has a different design so the way I showed earlier is how it is. Now they do talk about next 
you slide the boot, which is right there, you slid that boot back in order to get access to that bolt. But you remove that. <clears throat> they were talking about, you know, remove the uh, retaining bolt from each end of the drive shaft, like they were talking about this this bolt right here, um, which you, I did. And then they tell you to disconnect the drive shaft, uh, remove the drive shaft. But there was no room to do that when this is when this is all here. It's a different design. So you can see under here. This is all unobstructed in the manual, and it's got a shroud, and then it goes over, and then there's the uh, the clutch rod goes, and it's just all, it's a mess. It's kind of hard to get to. So this is how I had to do it, I had to deviate from the manual.